I have to be honest. I've never really struggled with my calling. I knew at 16 years of age, I wanted to serve the kingdom of God with my time and energy, talents, and my finances, with every fiber of my being. I even had a clear thought at 16 years of age of where I wanted to work. And I've never been fickle on those things. But there are some key things that I've learned along that journey from from age 16 to 42 now, over the last 26 years. And today, I want to share some of those insights with you. So stay tuned. Hey there, I'm Ryan Franklin, and I would love for you to join me every week as we explore leadership topics that will help you get the clarity needed to move your organization forward. Just hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notified as soon as I post a new session. And before we get started, I do want to mention that I have a great product called the Christian Leader Blueprint. It's a solid model for leadership development. And if you've been looking for something to help you or your team members develop in leadership, look no further than the Christian Leader Blueprint. And I want to give it away as my gift to you. So just go to ChristianLeaderMadeSimple.com and you can download it for free today. And without any further delay, let's get to our session. I mentioned in the first session on calling that my journey of searching out my own salvation at the age of 16, created within me a deep desire. This was sort of my burning bush moment. And I knew at 16 years of age that I wanted to spend my life helping people understand and obey the gospel. I wanted to help people move from a spiritual death to to that abundant life. And this is why I do what I do even today. It's why I have a passion for Bible studies and small groups and teaching people about leadership. And this calling gives me the energy to work hard and produce good things for the kingdom of God. But just because I've, I've never struggled with this calling doesn't mean I've never struggled. In fact, it's this calling that has actually caused me to even wrestle with particular things in my life. And I want to share a few of those with you today. The first thing is, is my devotion to the Lord had to increase. There was times in my ministry that that I got too busy to uh, give adequate time to devotion. And let me tell you, boy, was that a mistake. And I learned quickly that if I'm going to be successful with a spiritual calling, I had to learn to pray and fast and study the Word of God every single day. Maybe not fast every day, but, but definitely pray and study the Word every day. This had, to be, this had to become my lifeline. And I realized that if I was going to finish well, it would require this source of power. And really, it wasn't as much about what I was doing that I needed the help with. It was more about who I was becoming. And I realized that if I wanted to become who the Lord wanted me to become, it would only happen if I stayed humble and hungry for more of, of, of what God had in my life and more of God really in my life. The second thing is, is my desire for the approval of man had to decrease. Somehow, some way, over the course of my childhood, I developed this deep desire to please particular people in my life. It's called an approval addiction. And I could give you a whole series of of sessions on this one subject, but today I'm going to kind of keep it simple. Today I have a desire to healthily please my pastors and my leaders and other people in my life. But I have to be very careful that it doesn't bleed over into an unhealthy desire to please. I can't live my life and my calling seeking to please men. First of all, there's no way that I can please everyone all of the time, and I just have to accept that. But secondly, 
I have to come to grips with the fact that the Lord at times has moved on me to do things to progress His kingdom and the lives of people around me that didn't seem logical, and it definitely wasn't a popular thing for me to do. And so it's important that I don't allow the approval of man to stop that God-led progress, even if it doesn't sound logical. And I do want to clarify here that I have a very short list of people here in my life that I submit to and I allow to trump any decision in my life. But it's rare that they would do that. Um, and But when they do it, I submit and I will allow that to uh, them to speak into my life and, and help me make those decisions. The third thing, don't overly value your image. This is a big one for me, and, and, and it sort of goes along with the previous point. But it's the comparison trap. It can sneak up and, and it can get the best of us. And if I allow my image to motivate what I do, the job that I take, the opportunities that I pursue, there's no doubt that I'm going to miss the will of God for my life. And this is going to derail a calling quicker than anything else. So don't get caught up in the comparison trap. Then number four, enjoy the process of development. A calling is not an event in your life. It's not a job that you can accept and and then bam, your calling is fulfilled. That's not calling. Your calling is a lifelong journey. Think about Moses. He had a calling to, to write the first five books of the Bible, but and, and, and lots of other things. But he had to grow up in Pharaoh's house and be educated. And he spent 40 years in the wilderness. But it was that same wilderness that he would later lead the Israelites through. There's a lot in life that I, that I really don't understand. But I do know that God works all things together for the good. And I recently heard Sister Thetis Tenney say, if you're still struggling... God hasn't finished working all things together. You see, calling is, a fulfill, is fulfilled over the course of a lifetime. Calling is usually more fuzzy at the beginning of life, and then it begins to kind of clear up for most people as time goes. And so you might as well enjoy the process and the slowness of that calling kind of developing. And to take that to another level, Beyond just enjoying the process, I want to mention that I believe that the Lord wants us to have fun in the midst of that calling, to enjoy our spouses and kids and friends, and, and He desires that we have margin in our life so that there's balance and fulfillment as you live out your calling. It's very important. Then number five, your calling is to God, but it's through people, which means you have to learn to build productive relationships. It's a big part of the Christian Leader Blueprint. And as an introvert, there's times when I'd love to go live on an island and just soak in the rays. But reality is, is that the Lord designed us to need people. He designed us to, to, not, to not have everything it takes within us alone to get the job done. He designed us to need other people to fulfill the calling that He's placed within us. And so, fulfill your calling to God, but love people, cultivate relationships, and even use people around you to fulfill that calling. And in doing that, you're going to help others fulfill their calling as well. Then number six, start fulfilling your calling now. I look back at the last 26 years of my life and realize that it was the process of living in my calling that has developed me to be the man that I am today. And if I would have waited until I was qualified to engage in that calling, I probably, probably would still be waiting. Wherever you are on the journey of life, get to work living out that calling and that mission. You can't read enough books or attain enough resources, or go to enough schools. Just know that God develops the people that He calls and embrace the call 
and engage in that developmental process. I promise he'll make it happen. And so this is six things that I've learned about calling in 26 years of ministry. And I hope they help. I encourage you, uh, go check out my previous two sessions on calling if you haven't already. And I hope you have a great day. God bless you.